Hey. Okay, okay, so it's been a long time. I haven't explained a lot. I don't have a lot of time since your attention spans are quite short and my list is quite long. So let's get started. So here's my little space in the basement. Um, not really sure if I'm allowed to use this space, but no one has really told me no. So I basically packed up everything, put them in a couple bags, and brought it here. So I got all my tools, my batteries, uh, some special things I haven't explained yet, and oh yeah, the most important thing. So, I have a motorcycle. This is the bike that I've been working on uh, through college, at least my first year of college. This is the one where I had the video, uh, the quick slideshow that I uh, had for my last episode of Wrench It Up, but I didn't really explain anything. I didn't really say my motivation, I didn't really explain how I built it, where and when I built it, how I designed it, etc. So I'm going to quickly touch base on all those points and tell you what I'm doing with it. So first off, it's got bike tires and pedals. So it is a motorized bicycle in the state of Massachusetts, um, which is where I live. And basically, this thing is going to help me get around college without pissing off people on walkways. So I want a motorcycle, but having a large, like, beefy, loud motorcycle riding down like pedestrian walkways is definitely not gonna be uh, the best option for keeping people happy. So I've decided to basically build my own frame around bicycle parts. Essentially, uses mountain bike tires in the front and the rear, has pedals in the middle, uh, bike shocks, bike everything. So it's light and small uh, and also fits in your average bike rack. But it can also be powered by an electric motor or a gas engine. So let me quickly explain. So under here, this main frame sits a subframe. So basically, there's some threaded holes under here in this L shape. And in this shape, I can bolt in a uh, frame of really anything with these holes. Um, and I can mount a gas engine, an electric motor, a steam engine, literally anything that fits in this area can power this bike. Uh, as long as the power goes to this axle over here. So right now, it's empty, and um, I'm currently working for a gas engine to fit in here. I've worked out the kinks with the electric motor, as you've seen with the other episode, well, the one that came before this, but there's still a lot of work to be done to that electric motor. So, in a next coming Wrench It Up episode, I'll be going through the upgrade process of that next electric motor. Um, I'll cover all the details of that in that video because there's a whole list of things that I want to change about that electric motor. So here's the cream of the crop right here. This is a Honda XR70 uh, 80cc four-stroke engine. Now I'm not too knowledgeable about like part numbers and like where this engine came from. It came from like uh, I believe a Yamaha pit bike, but it's one of those like Honda clone knockoffs and the whole top end was rusted out because it sat outside with no carburetor. Um, so I had to replace the entire top end. So basically the engine's like new. Um, it's got new oil, new cylinder, new piston, new seals, everything, and a new carburetor. So it runs like new, starts first kick, it's great. Um, there's lots of dirt and other stuff in here. Uh, it's okay, a cover blocks all that from view. Uh, I made my own little intake because um, usual like shapes of intakes you see on Amazon and stuff weren't the right shape for my frame because you know my frame is not normal so I had to make my own by soldering some copper pipe together it should be able to withstand the heat from the engine it's not like the exhaust where I've had bad experience in the past of uh, the copper uh, solder desoldering itself under the high heat of the exhaust uh, I'm not going to make that mistake again the copper has <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So if we go out oh, our fancy side door, here we go. So right here we have uh, our two engine mounts uh, drying in the sun right now. Well, 
shade. So this is the muffler that came with the pit bike engine that I bought uh, a couple months ago for pretty cheap. The, the engine that was all rusted out that I replaced downstairs. Um, this is the muffler. It was covered in rust, but I brushed it all off, cleaned it up, and now I'm repainting it black. It's going to have a silver little uh, heat shield so I don't scald my inner thigh. Also, if you couldn't tell by this point, um, I'm really into motorcycles, like really into motorcycles. And uh, after my first moped or motorized bicycle, and now this motorcycle that I'm building right now, I couldn't help myself but start to make some others. So I didn't make videos of these because they were kind of fast builds. They weren't super interesting. There's plenty of other people who have done it on YouTube. So there's a couple interesting like design things I wanted to point out about this bicycle. So the frame right here is actually kind of built like a tank. It's really heavy and heavy duty. It's made out of uh, 16 gauge, one by one inch square steel tubing. This heavy frame is also uh, complemented by the slightly lighter aluminum arms in the back. Now these were water jet cut at my college. Um, and then right up at, in the back, uh, some wheel like adapters from the original frame that these wheels came from uh, bolt onto, mostly because I can't weld aluminum and no one that could weld aluminum like responded fast enough to me. So I kind of had to uh, put together a solution myself and this actually works just fine. Um, so everything rides on this central axle back here. Um, the pedals uh, have a freewheel on the right side, so the shaft doesn't turn the pedals, but the pedals turn the shaft. And over here, uh, at least for the electric motor version, uh, there's a freewheel on the sprocket side, so the shaft doesn't. So when you're pedaling, it doesn't turn the motor, and the motor doesn't turn the pedals, etc. But both turn the rear wheels. Uh, so over here, we have an eight gear shifter standard for most uh, mountain bikes, but the engine actually has four gears. So this motorcycle is actually going to have 32 gears. You may have noticed this little uh, fancy little decoration right here, but this is um, 3D printed on my 3D printer and then coated in a Kevlar and carbon fiber wrap soaked in epoxy. So this little uh, composite little mess right here actually supports my weight uh, with this bicycle seat. Um, and deep in here is the rear shock mount. The entire weight of the bike, uh, or at least all the sprung weight of the bike, including me, the engine, the gas, the batteries, etc., is all held up by this 3D printed part wrapped in some cloth. It's kind of weird that it actually holds up all my weight, and at any point it could snap like in the middle of the road and send me cartwheeling head over heel. So there's a couple things I gotta do before this thing runs and I can film it like running under its own power. So, first of all, there's mountain bike tires on here, and I'm going to be riding this thing on the street. So, those two don't really go well together, so I'm going to be replacing both these tires with uh, Maxxis hookworms. Uh, they're going to look, hopefully, really badass. Next, I got to uh, mount a 3D printed little uh, plate here that holds the key and some other electronics components for controlling the head and tail lights. Then I got to mount the motor mounts onto the engine, put the plate back on with the sprocket, the right size sprocket because the chain's a little loose right now, uh, remount the muffler once the paint dries, and then mount all of those pieces with just a couple bolts into the frame. Uh, I got to reattach the throttle, um, I got to reattach the gas line, uh, get the chain to the right length, and also modify the kickstart to not hit the pedals when you go to kickstart it or bad things happen.